This video is part two of a day spent traveling down a lot of dead ends on the middle level navigation. If you haven't seen part one, I'll link it below. We've made it as far as home, which is our 39th silver propeller location, and now we're off to explore Monk's Load and the Great Rovely Drain. We're currently heading east along New Dyke, which is a three-ish mile route that links the village of home with the course of the old River Neen. We've been finding that moorings on the middle level are fairly few and far between, but the middle level commissioners who are responsible for these waterways have provided some posts here to create a fairly rural rough and ready mooring spot. Just past the moorings, we're turning south down Monk's Load. Until the 17th century, the area of the fens that we now know as the Middle Level would have been mainly flooded. Over centuries, vegetation grew on peat deposits on the floodland, and some settlements developed in the region. Between 1630 and 1655, the Dutch engineer Vermoyden was commissioned to reclaim the land from this flood water. The Old Bedford River and the New Bedford River were cut off, and washland was created to store water. A number of straight drainage channels were cut, and water was directed to Salter's Lode to drain into the River Great Ouse and to Welch's Dam to drain into the Old Bedford River. Improving the drainage on the land meant that the peat fen shrank and the land levels dropped to below sea level. Because of this, high embankments needed to be created along the drains, which explains why our views from the navigations are so limited. Wind pumps were installed to lift water from the fields into the drains. These were later replaced by steam pumps. Some of the old pump buildings remain along the embankments today. Now, the middle level provides a vital link between the River Neen and the River Grey Twos and beyond. In total, there are about 100 miles of waterways on the middle level, most of which are navigable. Connington Fen Bridge marks the end of this navigation, although the water continues beyond for a mile or so. Monk's load is far too narrow for us to turn around, so Michael will need to do a long reverse back the way we came. This is possibly the remains of one of the old water pumps. I sure heard Michael say that he wouldn't go down if he couldn't turn around. Well, he couldn't turn around, but he had gone down. So now we've got about a mile to reverse back up Monk's Lode. Well, I look totally unimpressed with the situation, don't I? Still going backwards. I think we're nearly there. I don't know if we're nearly there. Finally, we're back at the end of Monk's Load and we can use the junction to manoeuvre ourselves to face the right way to continue our journey along New Dyke. Here we're passing under Charter House Farm Bridge. Its official headroom is a low two metres, so it's actually one of the higher ones on the middle level. We're now turning off New Dyke and onto Great Waverley Drain. Our first obstacle is getting under the curiously named Speed the Plough Bridge, which is 13 centimetres lower than the last bridge we squeezed under. We're at the next load now, and this bridge looks really short to me. But um, I guess we're about to find out how short it is.
loads of room and it seems Michael is pretty confident because he hasn't really slowed down, although he is having to duck somewhat. under the bridge just um, and this load is definitely wider than the last one and Michael's found this blog post that says there's a, a winding hole for 58 feet boat by the control sluice now we don't know how far down the control sluice is where that is um, and we don't know if it's going to get narrower but uh, at the moment we're carrying on could be another river I'm not sure why I'm filming this, but as it's one of only a very small number of landmarks around her, I thought her better. I'm guessing it's another old pump house. So there's definitely a sign on the sluice down there saying end of navigation. Uh, boats can't go any further. So we're just turning. Our first attempt at turning has failed. There's just too much vegetation over the water, especially where Michael was trying to put the stern. We go back to where we spotted a gap in the foliage and we try again. I didn't hear what you said. Are you all right up there? Yeah, we're um, just a few scratches from the brambles, but we're okay. Okay, great. Um, We're now back at the low bridge and the junction with New Dyke. We turn east again here and head towards the old River Neen.
So that's Exhibition Bridge. Exhibition Bridge is nominally 1.2 meters uh, at high water. Right now it says 1.5 meters. We're about 1.68 meters. <laughs> um, I tried to take a look at it, but unless I took the solar panels right off, there's no way I'm going through there. Um, other side of that is Yaxley Load. Yaxley Load is notoriously only accessible to boats with extremely low headroom. Uh, so, yeah, that's the end of that one. So now we're heading back. Back through the village of Ramsey St Mary, which we passed in the first part of today's vlog. We're now back at Lodes End Lock. We came through here this morning after we left Ramsey and High Load. I'm pretty sure no one's come through here since we left this morning. If you're looking for a peaceful area to cruise, this is a very good option. The middle level often feels a little isolated. There are a few lone houses on the flat landscape that just seem miles away from anywhere, which thinking about it is probably part of the appeal. We haven't seen another boat all day, and as I mentioned earlier, there are very few places to moor on the middle level, which is why we're counting on there being room for us at the Puck Blip moorings at Bennick. Just before the bridge you can see one of the many World War II pillboxes that are dotted around the middle level. This one is rather camouflaged by all the overgrown vegetation. The bridge ahead is actually at the junction with the 40 foot drain and here we're moving onto new waterways for us and continuing north along the course of the old river Neen. And it being a river it has many more bends than the man-made drains we've been on up till now.
There's much excitement aboard as we spot a boat coming around the bend, especially as we're not on the more well-trodden transit route between the Use and the Ning. When we start to see more frequent buildings, we know we must be on the outskirts of the village of Benwick where we're hoping to moor tonight. This is the public mooring and there's already a boat on it. Luckily for us, the occupier very kindly lets us moor alongside them. Okay. We're tired. We're tired. We made it to Benwick, which is about halfway between Ramsey and Floodfield, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's the corner at which the main line through here joins the uh, branch that we're on um there's only one mooring here and there was a boat on it but and it's not where it's shown in the map it's on the other side of the canal and the other side of a bridge but um yeah, i'm not sure what that's all about maybe there was a mooring over there anyway one way or another um we pulled up we pulled right past because we were looking for the mooring that was on the bridge found that it wasn't there reversed back the guy who's on the boat um uh, was really nice and allowed us to moor up against him and i need to go down the weed hatch but i'm not doing it tonight uh something got caught around the prop as we were reversing so it was good long, fun it was a long day we were going for about eight hours i think we left at eight and we, it's like four or five now yeah yeah long day uh but final silver propeller done a whole section of the middle levels completed, including a bunch of interesting little dead the ends. Places I didn't think we'd get to be honest. So yeah. It's better than I thought. We found the prettiest and, and best part of the middle level so far. So far, there might be more. Yeah. But again, it's only because we can actually see over the um, the banks. It might not be the prettiest. It's just you can see more from the boat. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. You know, from from the boat's perspective, mm. um, I'd say that the new dike towards home has been about the nicest part of the mm. whole thing there's you know as you turn back there's an old um, windmill on the horizon and then beyond that there's modern windmills spinning in the breeze and yeah we went up to exhibition bridge which is very short um water levels are lower than i expected so we actually had yeah because the map said 1.2 meters but on the bridge it actually said 1.5 so yeah but still not low enough for us no well the 1.2 is based on sort of the the average high level mm. at high water and they have kind of the level that they keep in summertime and the level that they keep in winter time and that is supposed to be based on the highest or the average highest water mm. that is kept so you know yeah unfortunately the fact that there was extra room on those ones, those are below the lock, so we don't actually know oh, whether yeah. or not there's extra room on any of the other ones. <laughs> and there's true. a bridge that's just ahead of where we are now. Which is pretty low. That's supposed to be quite low as not well. Not this one, the other one. No. So. But anyway, 
it's really nice here. Probably have a bit of an explore tomorrow, but not definitely not now. Not now. There's yeah. a village shop, there's a play park, and there's a public house. So. Yes, and there's a cemetery immediately beside the moorings, where George is not allowed. Oh, no dogs. Yeah, which is fine, but uh, but yeah, he, uh, he he had an interest, and I was like, nope, not allowed. Uh, George does not read signs, unfortunately. I've tried, tried teaching that guy. A dog should be able to learn English, but he hasn't been able to so far. Anyway. Yeah. So that's where we're at. We're going to take a day off uh, and get a little bit of catch up on shut eye and everything. Mm -hmm. But if you're coming through this area, make sure, if you've got the guidebook, <laughs> that when you see the sign that says Benwick Public Mooring, stop right there. That's the public mooring. I wondered why he couldn't, didn't go, like didn't stop. Yeah. I don't know. I wondered why I wasn't saying anything when I was thinking in my head, we should stop. I just thought, no, oh, there must be an extra yeah. one, right? I was just like, oh, well, there's the one that's marked on the map. So then it's, this one. It's through that bridge and on the other side. It's yeah. I was just like, oh, you know, so we're passing one. Well, maybe there'll be another one. Nope. No, no, no. no. Anyway. But thank you for Namaste for letting us more help. Mm -hmm. So Namaste. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. Yeah. Great. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to Minimalist Maximal Velocity if you want to have our time lapse videos. And click that bell if you want to have notifications. Also, oh, by the way, hi to the viewers who passed us at high speed on a corner. The only boat. It wasn't exactly high speed. Well, it wasn't high speed, but it was the. It was an unexpected. Yeah, boat. We, we, we were, like, we were both like, oh my god! We're the only boats around. No one else is here. What? Yeah. No, no. And then they were like, hi, George. And we we're like, ah, oh, just trying not to hit you. Have anyway, a good one. Bye. Bye.